All right. Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right. So today I want to show you what an expert has to say about Bible prophecy. And I want to ask you this before I start this video. Are you teaching the same thing that this expert is teaching? And I want you to consider that as we play this video. Okay, here we go. All right, take your Bibles, let's go. Now, I want to ask you questions. Do you recall uh, what verse to what verse is uh, history in prophecy, history past prophecy? And from what verse to what verse of Daniel 11 is future? Wait, wait, verse what? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. You know, I you got to love this guy, right? I mean, he's fantastic. But I'm going to show you this guy is way off. One through what? 35. And that is what? That's prophecy already fulfilled, correct? And, 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 and beyond that, verse... 36 and on is okay now would you mind all right so just that alone man it, that alone right there just nullifies everything beyond that so he's setting up a base and that base is not true at all and he has to do that in order to sell his false doctrine. All right, so just to go over what he says, he says, Daniel 11, verses 1 through 35, is prophecy fulfilled. And I couldn't hear him exactly, but then I'm assuming 36 and on is prophecy to come. Or whatever I, I don't know I can replay it if you like but um, this is not true at all all right so uh, Daniel is talking about the fourth beast here all right this is all in reference to the fourth beast and there is no all right what well, ends right there and begins right here that's not you know, if you've never read Daniel 11, you just have to take his word for it. But I want to encourage you to read Daniel 11. You can, there's only 12 chapters of Daniel. It takes about five minutes to read a chapter. All right, you can read Dan, the whole book of Daniel in an hour. Easy. I'm looking at verse 36 again. Remember, we just finished talking about Antiquity. The fourth. Oh, what? Hold on a second. Remember, we just finished talking about Antichius the fourth. Antichius the fourth. So, so he's really getting deep into his BS. All right. So, let me show you verse thirty-six. And the king shall do according to his will. Now, this is in reference to the fourth king of Daniel, the fourth beast. And the fourth beast is the last beast until the end of the world. All right. And so this is in reference to the Antichrist, which is the head of the fourth kingdom, which we can deduce that the king of the fourth kingdom <clears throat> is the Roman Empire. All right. Daniel names the first three beasts. The first one, the king of Babylon. The second one, king of Medes and Persians. And the third one is the Greek Empire. And we know by reading Luke chapter 2, verse 1, that Caesar is the king of the fourth beast because he is the Roman emperor. So the fourth kingdom is the Roman Empire. Make no mistake about it. So here in 
verse 36 when it says, And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper until the indignation be accomplished. For that, that is determined, shall be done. Now we read a parallel in the New Testament. In 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 4, Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, this is a parallel to what we're reading in Daniel 11. This is the fourth king, the fourth empire, the fourth kingdom, which is the Roman Empire, but at this point it, it is the Roman Catholic Church. All right, remember what it says. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And so because there is the falling away, because deception is growing and growing, the man of sin, which is the Antichrist, the fourth king of Daniel, and the beast of Revelation, the great whore, mystery, Babylon the great, because of the deception getting greater and greater, remember what Jesus says, except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Right, because the deception is growing, waxing worse and worse and worse, the man of sin gains in power and deception. And people don't see it. And because people don't see it today is why I firmly believe that uh, you know, it's <laughs> things are we're getting close. I mean, how much more deception can there be in the world? I mean, if and you think about how many people are unable to recognize the Pope in Rome is not, they, they think that the Pope in Rome is not the Antichrist. When the scripture clearly points to him. And you think about that. And, you know, a lot of people think that the Pope is a Christian, and he's not. And... Uh, it's worse now today than it ever has been and I could get into that but I won't let's go here and Antichrist the fourth was defeated by the Maccabees mentioned in verse 32 uh, mentioned in uh, did you hear what he said okay we just finished talking about Antichrist the fourth and Antichrist the fourth was defeated by the Maccabees mentioned in verse 32 Mentioned in verse 32, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Nothing at all about whatever he's talking about. Nothing whatsoever. And arms shall stand on his part. This is in reference to the fourth beast, the fourth king which is the Roman Empire, which is also the Roman Catholic Church. Nothing at all to do, you know, the thing is, if you believe what Benny Hinn's saying, then you're not going to see it. You're not going to see how dirty and corrupt the Pope in Rome is and how much control he has over the entire world. Remember, in Revelation seven, uh, 17, oops, now... It says that he, uh, all the kings of the earth, oh goodness, I'm going to butcher it if I don't look it up. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. So the woman reigns over your president. That's what this means. And if you don't believe the Bible, God help you. Alright, but that's what it means. 
And we go on from there in verse 36. So we, we have a, a gap in prophecy of, of, of many. Uh, 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 of. Yeah, he's taken advantage of people that do not re read their Bible. There is no gap. 32, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, and by captivity, and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be holpen with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God. For he shall magnify himself above all. There is no break in prophecy here at all. Benny Hinn is a flat out liar. Many hundreds of years. And now we jump to the future. And it says what? What does it say? How, how does verse 36 begin? One, two, three, go. <laughs> One, two, three. All right, now the king. Now, suddenly we go from... you think these guys know anything about Daniel 11? King Antichius IV, who was passed and dead and defeated, to another king, who is the Antichrist. And, the, and, the, and this king, So the what, Antichrist. So what he just said is not supported by the Bible at all. Listen to him. He's just making stuff up. All right, now the king. Now... Suddenly we go from King Antichius IV, who was... Which is not mentioned at all in Daniel 11, okay. Passed and dead. Wait, King, King Antichius? 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 King of the South? No. King Antichius? King and King of the Sun? No. King Antichius. King Antichius. The King's daughter of the South? No. No. King Antichius. King Antichius. Darius? The Mede? No. I, he's just making stuff up, man. Just making stuff up and has absolutely no understanding of the Bible and I'm telling you it's because he doesn't have any faith in the Bible but he sure is a smooth talker and he knows how to flatter people doesn't he he's a smooth talker he sounds like he's smart and he his attitude is that people are stupid so and he's got a nice suit nice hairdo nice suit he looks like a religious man doesn't he dead and defeated to another king who is the Antichrist. And the and the and this king, the Antichrist, is the one that's mentioned here. And most um, revealing about this is yeah, the just so there's no doubt here, the fourth king of Daniel is the Antichrist. In Second Thessalonians two who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, this is the Antichrist. The beast of Revelation is the Antichrist. All right, they're all the fourth beast of Daniel. They're all the fourth king in the kingdom of Daniel. The beast of Revelation is the fourth beast of Daniel. And the fourth beast of Daniel being the first beast, or the, the beast of Revelation, excuse me, is the Roman Empire. And the beast that was and is not and yet is, is the transformation from the Roman Empire into the Roman Catholic Church. All right, and the, this Roman Catholic Church is the great whore. It's a religion that poses itself as 
the bride or wife of Christ, but she is not the bride of Christ. She is a fake bride. That's what a prostitute or a whore is. She tries to perform the duties of the wife, but she is not the wife. The Roman Catholic Church is not the Church of God. All right, it's mentioned as a woman because it's a religious institution, but it is not the Church of God. It's the great whore. All right, the mother of harlots. And this is what Daniel is warning of in Daniel 11, all throughout, you know, all throughout his prophecies, in particular regarding the fourth beast it's really not complicated all right and there's nothing here in Daniel that is not supported uh, in the New Testament okay the fact that prophecy must be divided just like the word must be divided and understood it says and the king shall do according to his will and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods and it says and shall prosper till indignation be accomplished now that indignation is the tribulation and the great oh goodness sakes How do we go about this? Okay. And shall prosper till the ig... In, I can't even say that word. My English is not very Indignation. good. Indignation. 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 My English is not very good, so I apologize. Uh, indignation. Anger or annoyance provoked by what is perceived as unfair treatment all right and shall prosper till the ing indignation be accomplished for that that is determined shall be done so all this means is that this is going to um, this you know kingdom is going to prosper until it is accomplished now what that means is until the end of the world comes all right when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven that part is accomplished that part of uh, the the Antichrist or the fourth kingdom this part is accomplished in other words it's over all right so that's all that means all right, it's basically the same thing as saying that these things will happen until the end of the world. All right, for that, that is determined, shall be done. So that was, it's already been determined that this shall take place, and it is taking place right now, and it will come to an end. It will be accomplished and over with at the end of the world. Really not complicated. All right, what gets complicated is when you got false teachers remember what we read in Matthew 24 when Jesus is asked about the end of the world what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and what's the very first thing that he says he says take heed that no man that take heed that no man deceive you for many will come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many and then keep scrolling down many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many all right the, because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold right for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and they shall show signs and great wonders insomuch that if it were possible they doubt they shall deceive the very elect. Right, we're being warned over and over and over and over all throughout the scripture about deceivers. And what do we see in the world today? Deceivers. 
And this guy is, is he's one of the big ones. He's got a huge following. This is not his official channel. Just, just saying, okay. Benny Hinn has more than four subscribers. I guarantee it. Tribulation. Now you remember, I also uh, have, have said to you that there is a difference between what is called the tribulation and the great tribulation. All right, so, <laughs> you know, these guys, there is no seven-year tribulation. Right. And it, to me, I see a lot of people confusing the wrath of God with the great tribulation. It's incredible. Now, there's two things I want to point out here. Um, you know, one is that Jesus clearly says, after the tribulation of those days is the end of the world, when the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And this is prophesied all throughout the Bible. In fact, I was going to talk about that today, how the sun being dark and the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. This is found all throughout the Bible. It's pretty incredible. But for now, I'll try to stay on subject. All right. So here in verse 20, uh, 21, For then shall be great tribulation, and then it says immediately after the tribulation is when we are caught up together, caught up in the clouds of heaven. All right, so we're going through tribulation right now. Even Jesus Christ himself says, In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. All right. These things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Can anyone tell me what the tribulation means and what the great tribulation means? <laughs> yeah. Would you mind, David? We're not done yet, it looks like. Sorry. Yeah, you know, it, it, and all you have to do is stop listening to these guys and start reading and studying the Bible. Great Tribulation. Right there. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Alright. These are they which came out of great tribulation. Alright, so the Great Tribulation is just the world that we're in right now, and it is getting worse and worse and worse and worse. We read this, it's consistent all throughout the Bible. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Just like what we read in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 where except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved right so this is clear that things are going to get worse and worse and worse as we near the end of the world right things are just getting worse oops dog on it Things are getting worse and worse and worse all the way until the end. When, when the end comes, uh, there's a great question here asked. Uh, you know, it's confirmed or affirmed, confirmed that uh, God will avenge those who are against us. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Now, why ask that question if there's going to be a billion people on earth saved? There's not. Just like in the days of Noah, there was only eight people saved. And you think of Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about, there wasn't even ten righteous. right? And so also when the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven, there's a great question that he asks here. When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? 
meaning there's not going to be that many people saved. Remember what we read just in Matthew 24, except he shorten those days, except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Just by that alone indicates for us that there is not going to be very many people saved at the end of the world. So what's he talking about? The tribulation, there's the tribulation and then there's a great tribulation and there's seven years and we're going to split this in half and we're going to confuse the hell out of people. And mission accomplished. You've done a great job out of it. I'm here to tell you it's not complicated. It's simple. There is no seven year tribulation. It's not found anywhere at all in the Bible. I wish I could, you know, just pull up a screen and say, see? It's not in the Bible. It, that's hard to do because I'd have to show you the whole entire Bible and say, look, it's not anywhere. And it, look, it's not anywhere. It's not found anywhere at all. It's, you know, Jesus is asked specifically, what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus tells them very simply, very plainly, and he makes no mention at all of a seven year tribulation. It's not in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. It's not anywhere at all in the Bible. But it's incredible how many people are teaching this. Now, are they all teaching it because Benny Hinn teaches it? I think that's a fair question. Sorry about that. David, God bless you. That young man right there. Yeah, my friend, please tell me. Yeah, the first three years, uh, three and a half years are um, years of prosperity. Prosperity yeah. and peace. And, and peace. So and, uh, and well, the last? <laughs> the last three years are wow. years of, um, of plagues, of of the Antichrist actually attacking the Jews. Okay, now, you, you've, you've said what? something important. Uh, what starts the Great Tribulation? One, one event starts the Great Tribulation. What is it? No, I'm he, asking him. He breaks the covenant with the Jews. With it. And he does what? And uh, he exalts himself. Well, he... Oh, this kid, he don't... He's trying to. He's trying to remember what Benny Hinn said because he's not recalling anything from the Bible. What? Um, what is the best way to show you what he's referring to? Um. Yeah, there's there's only one way. <clears throat> excuse me. There's only one way. There's only one way to show you. There. I mean, he's only talking about one thing, All right? There, and there's only one way for me to show you. I want you all to understand this, because this is real easy to see. It's real easy to understand. And these guys, I'm telling you, they're, it's, they're not maybe they're right. They're wrong. Flat out wrong. And they're flat out liars. And they are mocking the word of God. They're deceivers. And they're mocking the children of God. And they're mocking God above. They have no interest in the truth at all. And they're just straight up liars. Now here... In Daniel 9, you'll hear people talk about this all the time. And you'll see all the deceiving. You can almost... Oh, I better not say it. I'm getting too strong with my words. Let me just say this. Because, I mean... And <laughs> I want to say something, but I can't. Let me just, refer Let me just uh, preface this okay so in Matthew 24 uh, talking about false Christ and false prophets they shall deceive if it were possible and it is possible but if 
only possible if you let them deceive you. All right, they should they shall deceive the very elect. All right, and that's what's happening in the world today. They deceive the very elect. All right, and it's worse now than ever before. All right, so in Daniel 9, when it talks about the 70 weeks, all right, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, this is when Jesus Christ laid down his life. He put an end of sins. He makes reconciliation for iniquity. He brings in everlasting righteousness. Jesus Christ did that. The Antichrist does not do any of that at all. All right, so when it talks about um, the destruction of the city, the sanctuary, <laughs> this is incredible. When you start to uh, listen to these false teachers, it takes a while to get un, um, you know, unprogrammed, if you will. And it's and it, the thing is, man, it's easier to lie to somebody than it is to convince them that they've been lied to. So the destruction of the temple, the Jews thought, well, Daniel 9 shows this and that. They had it all wrong, man. And you hear people talking about 70 AD. They got it all wrong. Jesus is the one that destroyed the temple. And Jesus is the one that rebuilt the temple. And Jesus is the one that ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return for us. And so he's led the way. He's died, defeated death, resurrected, and ascended to heaven. So also will we that are born of God die and then be resurrected and ascend to heaven to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Jesus has rebuilt this temple that we live in. Know ye not? What's Paul say? Know ye not that your body... Uh oh. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? This is so simple so easy to understand but when you listen to this kind of confusion you're gonna have to you're gonna have to say well if Benny Hinn's right then the Antichrist is the one that made an end of sins that the Antichrist is the one that caused a sacrifice and oblation to cease he is the Antichrist is the one that brings in everlasting Righteousness and the Antichrist is the one that destroyed the temple and then rebuilds the temple. I mean, you're basically calling Jesus the Antichrist. All right, and this is a big problem, man. And this is not something to be taken lightly. This is not something, well, sometimes people get things wrong. This is straight up lying. Commits the. Uh, no, he does something. He. he Besides breaking the covenant with the Jews, he does something else. What is it? Well, he goes into the temple and... Yeah, but, so, but before that. Before that? Uh, um, yeah, but, okay, somebody just said it here. Here. He solves no, a major world. That's in the beginning. Sir. He invades Jerusalem. That's it. Okay. That's it. Now, remember that's something. It. That the Even though it's not in Daniel line, but whatever. Tribulation begins... Listen carefully. The tribulation begins when Antichrist solves the Middle East problem. That's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. That's on your CNN and on your Fox News. But that's not in the Bible at all. I mean, think about that, man. If this is what you're teaching, you're in agreement with many Hen. brings peace to the world. You think the Antichrist is going to bring peace to the world? That's not in the Bible. 
Gee, I, I pointed this out earlier. Jesus says, In the world you shall have tribulation. Right? What's that verse again? These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You think this is in alignment with the idea that there's going to be world peace? In the world you shall have tribulation. Benny Hinn says in the world you shall have peace. And the Antichrist is going to bring you peace. I mean, do you not see this? These guys are basically saying that Jesus is the Antichrist. And it is... Uh, strangely familiar uh, or strangely uh, similar to what the Jews teach isn't it and so look I'm telling you I just I think it's important to shine a light on this stuff I mean this guy hasn't even gotten to the millennial reign I can't even get to it because there's so much mud in the first four minutes that I want maybe to help somebody see that these guys aren't just a little bit wrong they're straight up liars